Hi everyone, my name is Holly and I'm a food scientist. I've been a member of the Institute of Food Science and Technology since the beginning of my degree and my love of food science came from being a food tech student just like you. Why do food scientists collect data and how is this skill used in the industry? In this video we will look at how investigations are documented. Remember that this can include subjective observations and descriptions as well as accurate and approximate measurements. When you're carrying out investigations, there's lots of information to gather and data to collect. For example, if I was measuring salad dressings, I would accurately measure my vinegar and add it to my oil. Here you can see that over time, the vinegar and oil separate. But if you add an emulsifier, this is stabilized. You only need very small amounts of emulsifier, so make sure to use a digital scale. There are many different ways to measure data, but it's about using the appropriate method for your investigation. For example, if you were trying to measure the different raising agents in scones, you could measure it with a ruler to see how high they've risen. If you were measuring the effect of different glazes, you could use a colour chart. So if you were to measure enzymatic browning, you could take photos over different time periods. If you were trying to measure how much each starch thickened a source, you could use a viscosity chart or a ruler. Use IT such as spreadsheets to produce your charts and graphs more quickly. It also means that you can compare them quickly and look for patterns. A real life example of collecting data in the food industry is when packaging was changed in a packet of biscuits. It originally was in plastic and this was changed to go into a box. Then the boxes were transported as usual and the breakage level was measured. Here are my top tips for data collection. Label and photograph everything. Label your control and label your variables. You can also include a ruler and a timer in your photographs. Do you need to repeat your tests to prove your results? And did you get a result that you weren't expecting? So this was how to collect data and observations. In the next video, we'll be analysing our results.